it's working as so i have let uh, hello i need to finish this web application that we were doing so we have those prompts that we used in the last couple uh, days and long story short they yielded a pretty decent uh, flask application that looks like this hopefully it works right that looks like that and yeah made some more improvements uh, earlier today when you have a large uh, screen it now will uh, display the two charts the raw EG signal and the frequency spectrum side by side when you have a narrow window like on the phone it will display them top top to bottom yeah. that's a phone simulation i don't know what happened there but yeah it should look like that and then not all of it fits the screen which is a bit annoying i'm mainly testing on the desktop so yeah if you have any ideas how to improve this uh, for a mobile phone please do let me know and obviously there's many more things that we can be doing it's levels uh, am i getting an error no yeah this caption has taken a lot of space because it's there would be a lot of uh, dead uh, space underneath it uh, that's not cool uh we do not have play functionality so we can uh, remove it from the html description we can do it ourselves we don't need gpt to help and uh, let's just search for play play speed yep yeah, both yeah this one here can go channel selector yes we have channel selector filter order all spectrum toggle frequency scale that's all legit yeah that's where you can get the data from ieg.org but and by the way biodata repos ieg.org is not being mentioned ieg.org question mark has the site ieg.org is a website associated with the international epilepsy electrophysiology portal ieg portal the ieg portal is a platform that provides access to intracranial eeg ieg data for epilepsy research researchers can That's use right. this platform to access and analyze eeg data from patients with epilepsy it serves as a valuable resource for understanding the brain's electrical activity in individuals with epilepsy and for advancing research in the field of epilepsy treatment and diagnosis the link is legit yeah and yeah i think anyone can uh, uh, log in and uh, look uh, at some data they have a uh, online viewer as well let's get back to this one thing when we putting it as prompts into gpt i want to show a uh, make we want to put this at the bottom a uh, configure reading the code and do not generate anything else uh, yet we'll do the python last css after html right so we'll place that and start popping things into ChatGPT. hopefully it can make some more improvements for us and then we'll have to deploy the thing like we can do it in under 40 minutes what did it say i've reviewed the html code you provided it appears to be a web page for visualizing eeg electroencephalogram data offering various controls to interactively adjust the visualization as well as in-depth information about the features and technical aspects of the application yeah yeah that's right and we have the javascript again confirm reading do not generate any code and last is a flask application so hopefully after this it will appear on the barn chaos website fingers crossed have to pray to the gpt gods i've read through the provided javascript code this script seems to handle the initialization and eventlessness for various elements on a page related to visualizing EEG data. When the page content is loaded, the script initializes certain variables and references to DOM elements. Checks if the site is in production or development to determine the endpoint URL for fetching data. Defines a function fetch data and render that constructs a URL with certain parameters, fetches data from an endpoint, and uses plotly to render plots. 
sets up event listeners on various control elements to trigger the fetch data and render function whenever their value changes. Yeah, we also loaded the Flask application Python code. I've read through the provided Flask application code. This script sets up a Flask web application that initializes paths and constants related to the EEG data file. Loads a specific segment of the EEG data from a file into a pandas data frame. Provides utility functions for Butterworth band pass filtering. Serves an index, HTML template when the root URL is accessed. Provides an API endpoint, get underscore data which extracts parameters from the incoming get request. Processes the EEG data based on the provided parameters. Performs weighted denoising and transforms, if required. Calculates the frequency spectrum for various EEG frequency bands. Computes SNR, signal to noise ratio, and MSE, mean squared error, between the original and processed signals. Returns the process data as JSON to the client. Do you have any specific questions or tasks you'd like assistance with regarding this code? Uh, I will in a second. Yeah, I'd like it to be pushed to the right. Right, because we want the scroll label to be on its left all the time. Okay, that's working okay so far. Yes, a reminder this file has a seizure in it. And so if you place it, uh, the window says it's around 50 and scroll through the seizure. So you can have a more detailed scroll. The problem with that is that the, the window is adjusting. The amplitude is automatically adjusting. So it's hard to tell uh, where is the where the seizure is. Right, the trend meant to be on by default. Sure, we had a prompt for that, which is pretty simple. Just saying trend on by default should be a quick fix. Uh, why is it giving me many different options? To have the detrend option enabled by default, you should modify the default value in the get underscore data route where the detrend parameter is fetched. Currently, the default value for detrend is set to false if it's not provided in a request. What? By making this modification, if the detrend parameter is not provided in the request, it will default to true and the data will be detrended. Okay, yeah, why is that not working? Because it is provided. Yeah, we just change it in the HTML instead. If you want the front end to also have the detrend checkbox checked by default, you need to adjust the relevant HTML input element, not provided in the code snippets you've shown so far, to have the checked attribute by default. I'm pretty sure I have it. I did the trend. I did provide it to you. Can I just do this? Right. So now it's on by default, which is much better. And about all spectrum option, it should be turned into toggle switch. Yeah, this should be a simple fix as well. Surely ChatGPT4 can handle it. To convert the whole spectrum option into a toggle switch, you need to make changes in both the front end, HTML and JavaScript, and back end, Flask root parts of your code. It's almost as if it didn't uh, read the files that I uploaded. I already provided a separate CSS. Uh, did you read it? <laughs> okay, let's read this. I apologize for the oversight. You're right. I missed the details about the CSS you provided earlier. Given that, let's integrate the whole spectrum toggle switch using your existing. Getting all mixed up a bit, aren't you? Where's the whole spectrum? It's calling it whole spectrum yet. Yeah. Whole spectrum. Pop that in here. Uh, okay, I don't see it because we need to change spectrum toggle checkbox window switch dtrend class switch type checkbox. Yeah, it should have a slider. Why doesn't it have a slider? All the same pattern. Whole spectrum, yes. Span. Whole spectrum. Right, this is more like it. And it's called the same thing, is it? Spectrum ID. Those are the same things. Right, it's actually working. Let's 
great a break the inputs into three parts general should include the channel number window size scroll a window size and scroll then we have wavelet related stuff a discrete wavelet transform enables this wavelet thing doesn't seem to have a title or label right so it has labels a within the drop down menu right wavelet type is this pink spin replace it the uh, a wavelet type yeah, you can get rid of that right and back to the inputs uh, separate that into three parts general channel number a window size is one and we have the scroll then wavelet related stuff is wavelet in noise discrete wavelet transform filter order is only related to the spectrum and obviously a whole spectrum is related to spectrum frequency scale is related to spectrum that's right given the categorization of your inputs into three sections you can organize them in the front end by using html less than div greater than tags or field sets for a more semantic approach i'll provide an example using less than field set greater than as it's better suited for grouping form elements uh, okay but we did change the html and let's do it again why are you generating it do not generate anything else but i've read through the provided code this appears to be an HTML template for visualizing EEG, electroencephalography, data, complete with a navigation bar, settings and controls for data manipulation, and content sections that explain the application's features and purpose. I noticed that you've already implemented the whole spectrum toggle switch you mentioned earlier as. It seems you want to organize the controls into three distinct sections, general, filter, and spectrum. Grouping these settings can make the user interface more intuitive. In your CSS, assuming styles.css, you can style these control sections to distinguish them visually. For instance, by organizing the controls this way, users can better understand which settings are relevant to a particular category, leading to an enhanced user experience. Yeah, how hard would that be? Right, you have wavelet, wavelet type levels, then you have the rest kind of thing. Channel on window size. Okay, the trend can be moved in there after levels. Then say we will have the spectrum stuff, which is filter order, all spectrum, and frequency scale. A scroll might be going separately. And no, channel number, window size, and scroll can go together. So after the trend, let's have a whole spectrum. No, please don't do that. Because I don't trust you, GitHub Copilot. All spectrum, comment, a frequency scale. Yeah, we have all spectrum frequency scale. And then filter order. Yeah, this one here. Right. That makes a more sense. Then we have another one. Just all the general stuff, which have the channel number, window size, and scroll. A channel selector, window size, and scroll. Well, right, that's already the case. This should be good enough. Right, then we have the Flask application uh, app uh, settings. We changed the name. Yeah, we have those instructions for a deployment if you're deploying your flask application with apache you will likely be using mod underscore wsgi here's a step-by-step -step guide to help you with the deployment we need a step by step we did it several times already we're ready to deploy restart 
Apache. This might take a while. Yeah, the website is down. Should be only for a second. It's back up. Um, this is the previous. Uh, tool. Uh, control five. Okay, one thing we need to do. Ah. Uh, it's actually working no because sometimes um, because there's a C cdn uh, cloudflare you have to actually uh, modify and there are already ads on it sorry for that I have to recover some of the electricity costs uh, so this is testing in production Yeah, the 60 channel, different type of wavelets. These two don't work. I actually get an error. And uh, for them, we should be able to see in production. Yeah, don't like this jumpy bit when you reload the page. Uh, that's when you get to the edge, but that's okay. That's different, uh, different wavelet types. Yeah, this one. Hey, queuing in there. Should we fix it now or later? What do you say? This actually should have a separate uh, control. Just double check, see uh, what it looks like on the phone. Check if it was working. Yeah, I can't possibly fit the, both the charts. So what I suggest you do is change the settings and then look at the output. I don't, I don't know how to fix it. Yeah, it could be made uh, smaller, I guess. If you have any ideas, please do let me know of how to make it better on a, on a mobile phone. Yeah, the ad is not great. They now delayed, so they will only display uh, after 10 seconds or so after the page is loading. No still annoying but it's a free tool so uh, right and uh, next time we'll be touching on those r1 eg spectrogram because uh, currently uh, this is uh, frequency uh, so frequency spectrum not the uh, spectrum spectrum will be different we'll touch on it we'll do this uh, probably next week